Okay, so it's time for some trig. You're still going to start this problem out the same as you've done the other ones before for doing substitution. You always want to identify your U first, and the U is going to be what's inside of something else usually. So we're going to pick the 3 plus 2 cosine theta inside the parentheses. That's our U. 3 plus 2 cosine theta. And then for step number 2, you're going to take the derivative of both sides. So you're going to get du here. Derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we'll get negative 2 sine theta. Since theta is our variable, we've got to make sure this one matches 2, so you won't have dx here. It'll be d theta. And then for step number 3, you're going to solve for d theta, so du over negative 2 uh, sine theta. In the same step with 3, you're also going to plug it back into the original one. So we're going to plug that in. You have sine theta. And then down below, everything inside the parentheses, that turns into a, a u. So you have u squared there. The du gets replaced with du, or the d theta rather, gets replaced with du over negative 2 sine theta. And by substituting that in, you should get everything to cancel out. You should only have u's left over, and that does happen here. You'll get the two sine thetas to cancel. There's a negative uh, 2 on the bottom, which means that you can put a negative 1 half on the outside of the integral sign there. That's going to leave you with u to the negative 2 uh, du left over. I wrote it out in this format to make it easier to take the antiderivative. So now, step number 4 is where we are going to take the antiderivative. We'll use the inverse power rule there in that case. So you have negative 1 half, and then this, raise the power by 1, divide by the new power, and then we can just simplify this. The two negatives are going to cancel out, and then since you have u to the negative 1, you can write that down below the bottom of the fraction, so that will turn into a, a 1 over 2u, and it's positive again because the negatives cancel out. So once you get to this stage, the next thing is you want to plug in your, your u, so we're going to put this here inside it for u, and that way we have all the, the correct variable again. We have 1 over 2 times 3 plus 2 cosine theta. You can leave it like that, or if you want to distribute the 2 all the way through, you can do that as well. It doesn't matter. We have our bar here, which indicates that we're now ready to plug in our limits of integration. So if we got all this, erase this here so we have some space. And now we're going to plug in top number and then the bottom number. So down below you have 2 times 3 plus 2 cosine of pi over 2. And then you're always subtracting at 1 minus 2 times 3 plus 2 cosine of 0. So now we just have to figure each of these out uh, separately. We have to use our unit circle for that one. So down here we have 1 over 2, 3 plus. And then this part right here, cosine of pi over 2, uh, from the unit circle, that's going to be zero. It's the x value at 90 degrees, and so that's going to be a zero there uh, for that part. We're going to do the same thing for this one. 3 plus 2 times the value for cosine of zero. Now, if it's zero degrees, that x value at zero degrees is going to be one. So I have 2 times 1 uh, down below. And so now I just need to work out both these fractions. I'm going to get 1 6 uh, for that part. And then this part here, there's a 5 inside, and so that's going to give you a 10 down below. So now it's just a matter of getting some common denominators, and if you subtract those with common denominators, your final answer you'll get is 1 15th. So this would be the numerical value for this integral. All right, we got more trig. Okay, so we have another one that involves trig here from pi over, pi over 4 to pi. And the first thing we do again is do our steps for integration, the first thing is for substitution, you want to pick your u. The u is inside of something else, so we're going to pick the tangent because we have that's going to be inside of something else. So we're going to say that u equals tangent theta. All right, now once we get done with that, we're going to take the derivative of both sides. So du equals secant squared theta d theta. Don't forget d theta in the end. It's got to match this, the variable we already have already, so we have a theta there. For step 3, we're going to solve for d theta. That's going to be du over secant squared uh, theta. And in the same step, we're going to substitute this back into the original problem. So I'm going to get square root of u 
I still have the secant squared there. And then uh, I have d theta, which is just du over secant squared theta. Now that I have that complete, we're going to cancel both of those out. You're left with uh, u the one half, that's square root of u. And then I have uh, a du here, not d theta. And now we're ready to uh, integrate this. We'll do that in step number four. So everything all matches. You should always have everything canceling out. You should have all u's here, and that should be a du. When we integrate that, raise the power by one, divide by the new power. So we do three halves, and then divide by three halves. That means we can write this as two thirds u to the three halves, and that's uh, correctly integrated. The last step we, we do also in step four is to plug the, the u back in. So I'm going to put a tangent in there for the three halves. And then from there, I'll be ready to integrate and put the numbers in. Okay, so I have tangent theta. That's the three halves power. I'm, I'm basically ready now to put in my numbers to get the final answer here. So I put the bar there that indicates that we've already integrated it, but now we're ready to plug in the numbers to uh, get the answer. So we'll put in, top number always goes in first, so we're going to put in tangent of pi to the three halves, and then I have two thirds tangent of pi over four, all that raised to the uh, three halves power. So once again, we need to use basically unit circle or tables to get the values for uh, both of those. So uh, at pi, that's like sine of pi over cosine of pi, and sine of pi is zero. So I know that this whole entire thing is going to be uh, zero there, tangent of pi. The next one I have two thirds, and then tangent of pi over four. That's a one. So two thirds times one to the three halves. So I just get zero minus one to anything is one. So I get zero minus two thirds. That's gonna give us negative two thirds. So negative two thirds would be the numerical value for this integral.